Jesus is going to establish his kingdom right here on this earth. And we need to know how we're going to get there. So I titled this subject, The Translation of the Saints. Subtopic, how we enter the kingdom. And subtopic to the events after the thousand years. Some people might say, you know, what, why is that important? You know, you can get to the habit that you do what we call just coming to church as a social event. Amen? And you come to church and, you know, the praise and worship did a good job today. Our musicians did a good job today. Don't y'all go too far, young man. Um, and you'll find that when you see all of that, you can get really addicted to that. And nothing wrong with that. I like praise. I like worship. And it's good to get uh, to come in because song soothes. But you can also go out the door and you've learned nothing. And it can become a repetitive routine. And at the end of the day, what do you know? What do you know about the scriptures? What do you know uh, what you need to do to be in the first resurrection? Some people didn't even know that there's two resurrections. Some people don't know how does this body transform from being flesh and blood? How does it become spirit? Some people need to know when does this happen? So we're going to get into that. So let's go to the book of Revelations. This is a book that a lot of people don't dive into. But I remember uh, coming to the series when Elder Blake on Monday nights when he teaches uh, in Revelations. He started in the very first chapter. And he read something. And I'm going to read that to you today. Revelations, the first chapter, verses 1 through 3. Go ahead, Brother Michael. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Now these are things that are going to shortly come to pass. And somebody says, well, when is he going to come? He keeps saying he's going to come, he's going to come. Grandmama and them said that. My great-grandmother said that. They've been saying that for years. When is he going to come? But you see, as the saints of the Most High, the children of Israel, we know when he's going to come. I told somebody the other day, uh, he ain't, I told him on yesterday, I said, I can tell you one thing, he is not coming tomorrow. And he's not coming next week. Somebody responded, well, what about, didn't the scripture say, no man know the day nor the hour? Absolutely. Absolutely. But he reveals his secret things to the righteous. And one thing he said in Matthew 24, when they kept asking this question, when is all of this stuff going to happen? And he said, when you see the abomination of the desolation stand in the holy place as spoken by Daniel, the prophet, then you'll know. And that has not happened yet. Keep going. Who bear record of the word of God. And the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Uh-huh. Blessed is he that readeth. Now listen to this. Blessed is who? Is he that readeth. He that readeth. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. Uh-huh. And keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. For the time is at hand. Amen. Let us go to the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter. So first of all. In order to get some understanding, you have to read Revelations. A lot of things are in Revelations, but in order to get it, you got to read it. Amen? And, or, and you got to hear the words of the prophet and keep the things that are written therein. Let's go to find out um, what Matthew, what Jesus told them how these things are going to transpire. Matthew, the 24th chapter, start with verse 27. Verse 27. For as the light, lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also be the coming of, son, of the Son of Man Now be. we know, number one, when we see this lightning, and, and, and it's, it's bigger than just seeing lightning. We see lightning every day. But you're going to see a change in the consolation. And go down to verse 29. 
immediately, immediately after the tribulation of those days. Because there's going to be a tribulation. There will be a tribulation. Read on. Shall the sun be darkened. Uh-huh. And the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So that's the change in the consolation. Keep going. And what's going to happen after that? And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And then shall... And then they, and they sh shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. We do know, Elder Mac, that when he comes, he's going he's to gather his people. He's going to gather those that are in him. Whether you're in the grave, whether you're still alive. He's going to gather you from the four corners of the earth, wherever you are. He's not going to just grab anybody. You have to be in his will. You have to be in his will. And he's going to gather you uh, from one end of the heaven to the other. And that's when he comes. Amen? So when he comes, you can expect that. If you're not in his will, it's not going to happen. Let's see what Isaiah said about this. Because he, Matthew, Jesus is only confirming what the prophet said. Matthew, the 27th chapter. Just read two verses. Isaiah. Verses 12 and 13. Listen to this. Isaiah. Isaiah, 27th chapter, verses 12 and 13. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall beat off from the chain beat off from the channel of the river unto the stream of Egypt, and ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. So you're going to be gathered one by one, ye children of Israel. Keep going. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come, and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria, and the outcasts of the land of Egypt, and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount of, at Jerusalem. Now we know that there's going to be a trumpet. And we know that trumpet is going to sound. And see, this is where we're going to show you that this is why you got to listen to the feast days. You got to know the feast days because this is not just any trumpet. And this trumpet is just not going to be just blown any time. There's a specific season that this trumpet is going to be blown. So when he says in that uh, Verse, uh, I think it's 29, and it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown. This is when it says the great trumpet, that's the last trump. When that trumpet is blown, the great trumpet, there's a lot of trumpets in the Bible, but this is one of the great ones, which means something significant happens during this time. So let's find out what sign that is the Almighty given us in the scriptures that is a roadmap to that. Let's go to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Levit Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Let's read verses 1 through 4. And this is why our feast days are important because they are a roadmap to what's going to take place. Listen to this. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying. What did he say? Speak unto the children of Israel. Uh -huh. And say unto them concerning the feast of the Lord which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Now these are, not only are they holy convocations, they feast. And let me tell you this, they're also Sabbaths. They may not say the word Sabbath, but they are Sabbaths because they're holy convocations. And in some of them, they do say they're Sabbaths. So not, you know, because just because he doesn't say, well, this feast day is the Sabbath. This say this feast day is the Sabbath. It's an understanding that a holy convocation is a Sabbath because there's certain things you can and cannot do as you do on the weekly Sabbath. Keep going. Here's one of the first things he wants you to understand. You can't understand when he's going to come until you understand this. Listen to this. Verse 3. Six days shall work be done. Uh-huh. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Uh -huh. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations. Ye shall proclaim, proclaim them in, in their seasons. Now skip down to verse 33 through 36. Just read those three verses, 33 through 36. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, What did he say? Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth 
day of this of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. Now I want to I want you to understand because I sped it up. I skipped a lot of feast days because the day's subject is the translation of the saints entering into that thousand years. When does it take place? You must understand the Feast of Tabernacles. If you can understand the Feast of Tabernacles, you can understand what's going to take place at the end. So when we have these feast days, don't look at them, or we just coming together? It's another annual feast days. We just going to come together, and we do this over and over and over. But there's an understanding to these feast days that if you can understand it, you can understand the future, the future of what it's trying to show you. Amen? So first thing he says is that in the seventh month, on the 15th day of the seventh month, there's going to be a feast of tabernacles for how long? Seven, seven days. days. Why seven days? Because man is only given seven, seven days. days. Flesh is only going to be on this earth for seven, seven days. days. Because you are the tabernacle, and I'm going to show that to you in a minute. 35. Keep going. On the first on the first day shall be a holy convocation. There's a holy convocation. You shall do no serve our work there. Uh -huh. Seven days yet seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall offering an ye shall offer an offering made unto fi made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. But I thought it was an eight day, seven day feast. Why, where did this eighth day come in? Because he's just said this is the feast of tabernacles for seven days. Where did this eighth day come in? Because I want you to understand something. There's seven days in a week. Each day is a thousand years. After the thousand years is up, you got the very next day, which is the eighth day. Some people look at it that it's starting back over. It's the first day. But after the seventh day, things are over, church. It's over. It's the eighth day. Amen. And a whole lot takes place before that eighth day starts. But if you're only going to be in a tabernacle, because that's why they call it the Feast of Tabernacles, because you're only in this body, unless you're in the first resurrection. But mankind, when I say you, I'm meaning flesh, people, on earth, humans, is only going to be in bodies, flesh and blood, for seven days in a tabernacle. But then the eighth day, something differently happens. And we're going to get into that. But let's go over to see how John saw this. Let's go to Revelations, the 15th chapter. Revelations, the 15th chapter. Because before the eighth day comes, I want to talk about the seventh day. When the trumpet sounds, which is the first resurrection. Let's find out what happens. Revelations, the 15th chapter. Read verses 1 through 4. 1 through 4. And I saw another sign in heaven, uh -huh. great and marvelous, seven angels having, the la having seven last plagues. For in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, the sea of a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. Now this is rejoicing time because what John saw was a vision. And I'm going to show you John is not the only one that had this vision. This is why you have to read Revelations. Blessed is he that readeth and understand the prophecy of this book because you can understand the revelation. John saw something. John's just not writing. John is writing because in the first chapter, the angel of the Almighty came to him and told him to write this stuff down. He's not writing it to be writing it. He's not writing it to put it in the book. Whenever you have words in the book, they're meant to be read. And things that we read are meant to be understanding. And all of your getting get what? Understanding. And my people are destroyed for the lack of what? Knowledge and the reason why we're destroyed for the lack of knowledge nine times out of ten because we don't read. Amen. And the reason why we don't read because we go by what we call oral transmission or uh, uh, information, oral information. We go by what mama said, we go by what daddy said. A lot of times we go by what the preacher said and we don't even read. 
Amen? And this is why you have to read. Some people say, you give a lot of scriptures. Pastor, I have to give a lot of scriptures because I don't want any thoughts to come out of my mouth. I want the word to do the walking and the talking. So he sees this uh, glass. He saw uh, 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 these people, and I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast. So somebody has to get victory over the beast. You know, a lot of people don't even know who the beast is. The beast ain't an animal running around. The beast is a system. It's Satan. Those that are working for that system. And you need to know what that system is. Anything that goes against the opposite of God is the beast and the system. If God says the seventh day of the week is the Sabbath and somebody else saying it's the first day, it's the mark of the beast. If God says eat clean is a dietary law, what I want you to eat and don't eat, and somebody else says you can do anything you want to, that is a system that is being operated by the beast. And you're going to have to overcome that. You're going to have to overcome that. And those that overcome, what, what happened in verse 3? What happened? And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou king of saints. Uh-huh. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. Here's where you're going to have to put line upon line, precept upon precept. You just cannot read revelations to get the fullness of understanding of this. You're going to have to go back. Let's go back to the book of Psalms. Let's see what David had to say about this, about these people singing. Because, see, this is where songs come in, Sister Faye, that, that we're just going we to go to heaven and we're just going to shout and sing all day long. First of all, you ain't going to heaven. We already learned in the previous weeks the kingdom of God is going to be here on earth. And number two, you're not going to just be singing, 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 singing. But if you read some passages without putting them together, you think all you're going to do is walk around singing. That's a boring place. Amen. I don't want to just sing all day. Amen. I'm going to get tired of singing. Am I right, musician? Amen. After a while, you get tired of playing. After a while, you get tired of singing. Singing is good. Amen. But, but give me some meat. Give me some word. Amen. Give me some word. And you got to have what we call a balanced meal. Did you know that much studying is weary? Amen. I can't, that's why I can't go past a certain time. Because I can't go past a certain time. I got to know I got a limit too. Amen. So let's see what David said about this singing. Because these saints are not just singing. I want you to see what else they're going to be doing. Read Psalms of 149th Division. Read verses 1 through 9 real quick. Praise ye the Lord. Uh -huh. Sing unto the Lord a new song. And praise and his praise in the generation of the saints. Uh huh. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Oh, now they're happy. What are they going to do? Let them praise his name and dance. Let them sing praises unto him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Uh -huh. let, the saints be let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Uh -huh. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Yes. And the two-edged sword in their hand. Wait a minute. They're going to be singing. They're going to be singing praises out of their mouth. And they're going to have a two-edged sword in Amen. the other hand. Amen. Amen. So you got to understand, at the same time, they are happy, but they also have a work to do. The word of God is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And swords are meant to do two things. It gets down to the bottom of business. Amen? Amen. What are they going to do with that sword? They're singing, they're happy coming out. But what are they going to do with that sword? Listen to the next verse. To execute vengeance upon the heathen. Oh, they're going to execute vengeance. Upon the heathen. You mean the saints are going to do that? So you need to know what you're going to be doing when you return. If you're in that first resurrection. You're not going to just be singing. 
Oh, you're going to be singing, but you're going to have a sword in another hand, and you're going to be executing vengeance upon the heathen and what else? And punishments upon the people. What else are you going to be doing? To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all the saints. Praise ye the Lord. Amen, amen. Now let's go back to Leviticus because I want to know again, when does this happen? When does, what feast day that tells us this happens? Go to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. 23rd chapter, skip down to verses 39 and 40. Just read two verses. See, I have to go back and forth so you can see uh, uh, the translation. Because first you're in the body. You're in flesh, right? But how do you come up out of the body? When do you become flesh to be in a position that you're singing happy and with the sword in another hand? Read that. 23rd chapter of Leviticus, verses 39 and 40. Listen to this. Also in the 15th day of the seventh month, uh -huh. when, ye have gathered in the, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath. And on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Now, again, here he is. He come telling you seven days you're going to have this feast. But all of a sudden, he throws in this eighth day. Did y'all notice that? Amen. Seven days you're going to have a feast. But on the first day is a Sabbath. Then the eighth day is a Sabbath. Because on the eighth day, that is the beginning of a new era of time when flesh will exist no more. No more. Why? Because... We are in a temporary structure right now. That's what Feast of Tabernacles is. It's to let you know that you are dwelling in a temporary structure. Read the next verse. Listen to this. And ye shall take, and ye shall take you on the first day the, bow, the bows of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the bows of fig trees, and the willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. See, we do that. We, we, when we come here for the Feast of Tabernacles, uh, we, we're dwelling in booths. And let me just say this. You don't have to dwell in the booth, okay? You find those other Jews who don't believe in Jesus, they dwell in booths because they ain't got the picture yet. Amen. Amen. You look around, come Feast of Tabernacles, and we're in a strong Jewish community in South Florida. You see folks building booths. You see folks living in booths. You got some uh, 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 people living in tents and doing all of that. You don't have to do that no more. Amen. Amen. You don't have to build a booth. Somebody said, what do you mean you don't have to build a booth? You better give me a scripture. Go over to Nehemiah. Nehemiah, the 8th chapter. Read just four verses, 14 through 18. This is a little sidetrack a little bit because I want to let you know that when you come to the Feast of Tabernacles, you don't have to dwell in a booth that you make, that you put together. You ever see people do that? Amen. They put together the booth. They take the, uh, they build a big thing, and some people actually live there. There's some groups here in the United States, what they do is they bring everybody together, and they'll go out and live in a tent in the woods during the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay? We need to get some understanding. And I'm glad we got it. But folk need to get the understanding. Listen to this. And, and let me build you up to this. Nehemiah, the children of Israel, had not kept Feast of Tabernacles for a long time. But when it was time to them to rekindle this feast day, what did he say? And they found written in the law which, had, which the Lord had commanded by Moses that the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast of the seventh month. Uh huh. And they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches and pine branches and myrtle branches and palm tree and palm branches and the branches of thick trees to make booths as it is as it is written. Keep going. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths, every one upon the roof of his house, and in their courts, and in the courts of the house of God and in the streets of the water gate, and in the street of the gate of Ephraim, and all of the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths, and sat under the booths. For since the days of Jeshua, the son of Nun, unto, the day, unto that day had not the children of Israel done so. And there was, a, there was a great, and there was very great gladness. Also, 
day by day, from the first day unto the last day, he read the book of law of the law of God, and he kept the feast seven days. And on the eighth day was a solemn assembly according unto the manner. Now we find out when this feast day came, they 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 took it in the church, they put it in the courtyard, and they, they didn't dwell in it, they sat inside of it. That's all you have to do. Amen. But the issue is, is that you don't have to dwell in it because guess what? You are already in a temporary tabernacle. So you don't see that until Jesus comes. Amen. Because what I want to show you is, is what this tabernacle is. This tabernacle during the Feast of Tabernacles, and what does it relate to being translated during the thousand years? You are in a temporary structure. This body... You're not going to have if you're going to be in that first resurrection. Why? Because it's a temporary structure. Let's go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter, the first chapter, and let's show you what, why this is a temporary structure. Verses 13 and 15. Two verses. 2 Peter, the first chapter, verses 13 through 15. What does it say? Yea, I think it meet. As long as I am in this tabernacle to stir up, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Now, you notice Peter says that his body is a what? Tabernacle. tabernacle. So when you have the beast of tabernacles, Brother Reggie, it don't have, it has very little about the children of Israel dwelling in a temporary structure when God kept them coming through the wilderness. You're not going to last in this body. It's temporary. So he says... Uh, yea, I think it meet, I think it's important, as long as I'm in, in this tabernacle to stir you up, keep, in, keep going. To stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Uh-huh. Knowing that shortly I must put off, my, put off this, my tabernacle. Because you are going to have to take off this tabernacle. If you're going to be in the first resurrection, you're not going to have this body. On the eighth day, you're not going to have this body. Because you're not going to have this body, church. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people think that, we, that, that the Almighty is going to come and set up a kingdom. And, and, and if we're going to be in his kingdom and a part of his kingdom, that we can just go on being flesh. A lot of flesh is going to be destroyed, and I'm going to show that to you. But those that are in the first resurrection, you have to take off this body. You have to take it off. Keep going. Even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Why? Because Jesus showed you that. Jesus didn't go up in the same body. He went up, came down, and he had a new body that was what? Spirit. Keep going. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. Let's go over to 2 Corinthians. Let's see how Paul placed it. 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. How he explained it to the Corinthians. Because I'm going to let you know, church, this, this tabernacle, this body is a tabernacle that is temporal. It's temporal. You don't need to. I know that the nurses and the, and the nurse practitioners are talking about all the elements, uh, ailments that you go through, all the heartaches and the itises that you go through, all the inflammation and diabetes and, and, and high blood pressure. This body is a temporary tabernacle. Read verses 1 through 4 real quick. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. Because it's going to be dissolved. We have a building of God. And but we have a building from who? God. We have a new body that's going to come from God. Keep going. And house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And it's not going to be made with hands. Keep going. For this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon, the upon with our house, which is from heaven. And I want to be clothed with that house. I want to be in that first resurrection so I can be clothed with that house. Clothed with what? That new structure. Why? Because this tabernacle is only a temporary tabernacle, and that's what the Feast of Tabernacles is really all about. Amen? Keep going. If so, that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. And if you're clothed, you're not going to be found naked. 
Keep going. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan. We that are in this body, we groan. Be Amen. Being burdened. Uh-huh. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon. That mortality might be swallowed up of life. And I'm hoping that mortality will be swallowed up in life so I can have immortality. Y'all want to know what we're here about? You want to know why we're here? We're here to find out how do we become immortal. What feast days tells us about being immortal. Amen? Amen. I can come and preach Daniel in the lion's den every week. I can preach touching the hem of his garment every week. I can teach Paul being delivered from prison and associate with that in your life every day. I can do all kinds of analogies and make you feel good. But did I tell you how to become immortal? Do you know if whether or not you're going to become immortal? Yes, this body is temporary. And our job is to become immortal. Amen? Amen. Corinthians, first we read uh, 2 Corinthians. Read 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And I want you to get this one right here, verses 35 through 54. Now, I want you to write this down, and I want to take my time with it because you need to get this. You really need to get 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, 35 through 54. I want you to read that. Go ahead. Listen to this. But some man will say, uh huh. how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Now, people want to know. I don't know if they want to know today because we've been bamboozled with religion that we just come to socialize, sing, hear an inspirational message, how loose you are, how you're going to be taking over the bridge of the water. And so folk don't ask these questions no more. But they did ask the question because when shortly after the days of Jesus, they said, listen, how are the dead raised up and what body? Do they come? Are you going to come back in? Listen to this. Thou fool. Uh-huh. That which thou soweth is not quickened except it die. Now, he called him a fool. I, I, when I read this, I kind of laughed a little bit. Because, Brother Kirk, this is a good logical question. And he said, thou fool. That Just was... because they wanted to know what body is raised up. I think we worse today because we don't look at being resurrected from the grave. We think when we die, we're going to heaven. So he might say, thou idiot, you don't die and go to heaven. So they ask the question, what body does it have when it's raised up from the dead? What body? He says, thou fool. Listen to what he said. That which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. This body cannot be quickened except to die. Keep going. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that the body, that not that body that shall be, uh -huh. but bear grain. It may chance of wheat or some other grain. So whenever you put something in the ground, when it comes up out of the dirt, it don't come looking like the way you put it in the ground. Am I right? Amen. Keep going. Listen to this. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. Uh-huh. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is kind there there but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds. So you're not gonna die and become a cow. That threw Hinduism all out the window. Amen? Amen. Because you can only be what you was planned to be and if you're not going to plant an apple seed and get an orange tree. Amen? So when flesh uh, is put into the ground, it's going to become the product of what it's supposed to be from that fleshful standpoint becoming immortal. Amen? Keep going. There are also celestial bodies and Be bodies terrestrial. Because we have celestial bodies, we have terrestrial bodies. One's heavenly, one's earthly. Keep going. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. And when you're resurrected, you're not going to be thinking about nothing about an earthly body. Amen? Keep going. 
There is one glory of the sun uh -huh. and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star and in glory. And this body is going to differ when it's resurrected. Why? So, so also is the resurrection of the dead. How is it sown? It is sown in corruption. And how is it going to be raised? And it is raised in incorruption. And it's going to be raised in incorruption. If you're going to be in that first resurrection, your body's going to be sown in corruption, but it's going to be raised in incorruption. Keep going. It is sown in dishonor. Uh-huh. It is raised in glory. Keep going. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. And keep going. It is sown a natural body. But? It is raised a spiritual body. Why? There is a natural body. And there is a spiritual body. Because you need to understand what happened from the very beginning why this process has to take place. Listen to this. It is written. And so it is written. The first Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Because the first Adam being Adam was made a quickening. He was made a living soul. He was made flesh. God breathed into him, and he be man became a living soul. But the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Keep going. How be it that was how be it that was not the first, which is spiritual, uh -huh. but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. Now, how is it that because the first man was what? The first man is of the earth. Because the first man is of the earth. Earthy. Earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. And the second man is the Lord from heaven. So you need to take on the Messiah. If you, that's why the dead in who? Christ is going to rise first. Keep going. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. Uh-huh. And as? And as is the heavenly, such are are they also that are heavenly. Now, let's talk about this tabernacle. Listen to this. And as we have born in the image of the earthy. As you born the image of the earthly in this temporary tabernacle. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly. You're going to have to bear the image of the heavenly. Heavenly are those that are of the spirit. One celestial, one celestial, and the other one's terrestrial. You're going to have to bear that image. Keep going. Now this I say, brethren, Why? that the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. If you want to be in the kingdom of, if you want to reign with Christ and you want to be a part of that kingdom, flesh and blood ain't going to get there. There's going to be flesh and blood on earth. But if you're going to be in that first, first resurrection, you must and you cannot be flesh and blood. And when the eighth day comes, when the eighth day comes, there will be no flesh because when the kingdom of the Father comes down, because the Son gives him a perfect kingdom, there will be no flesh and blood. Either you're going to be spirit or you're going to find yourself over there in the lake of fire. See, this is the things that we need to know. Keep going. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Uh-huh. Behold, I show you a mystery. Now, here's a mystery because some people don't realize that not everybody's going to sleep. Keep going. We shall, not, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. But we all going to be changed. This is how it happens. Listen to this. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Why? For this corruptible must put on incorruption. Listen, and if this, you are not dead when he returns in your grave, and if you are in him, if you are in his will, Amen. not everybody's going to sleep, but everybody's going to be changed. Amen? Amen. And, and it don't take a long time. In a moment in the twinkling of the eye, the trump shall do what? That's why we call it the Feast of Trumpets. That's why it's giving you understanding. It's giving you a warning. It's giving you a precursor of what's going to happen. Keep going. For this, corrupt, for this corruptible must put on incorruption. Did we, did we read that part? Uh, uh, and this, in a moment of twinkling of eye, the yeah. last trump for the trump to sound. Mm -hmm. And the dead, the dead, not just anybody, the dead in Christ are going to be raised how? Incorruptible. And if you didn't die, we shall what? 
Be changed. Be changed. What's the next verse? Why? For this corruptible must put on incorruption. We're talking about the translation of the saints. So you got to get ready now. You got to understand this now. You got to know what's going to happen now because this corruptible must put on what? Incorruption. And this what? And this mortal must put on immortality. Keep going. So when this corruptible shall, be, shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. My God, my God. Give the Lord a hand clap. Because the first thing you have to do is you got to be baptized of the water. Amen. Let me tell you something. You got to be baptized. You got to be baptized of the water. Amen. You got to repent and be baptized, every one of you. I don't care what kind of knowledge you come into. I don't care if you come into the knowledge that, that your father and your DNA goes all the way back to a Pacific tribe. I don't care what you learn. I don't care what PhD you have. I don't care what theology school you go to. If you don't repent and be baptized, you are not going to be in that first resurrection. Because you want to be born not only of the water, but you also want to be born of the spirit. Go to Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. Read verses 13 through 18. We're moving along real good here now. But I, I would may not finish ahead of time. Go to 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verses 13 through 18. Listen to this. But I would not have you to be ignorant, uh -huh. breth brethren, concerning them which are asleep, uh -huh. yet ye sorrow not, even as others which have which have no hope. See, this is why you got to understand when you got people that dead, that died in Christ, he says, I don't want you to be ignorant, brother, concerning them which are what? Asleep. Asleep. Not in heaven, but those that are placed into the grave, six feet under. Because when they die, the hearse is going to take them right out of the mortuary and put them right inside of uh, uh, the ground and going to put them six feet under and going to cover them up. But don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Why? Because you need to know something as the saints of God. What do we need to know? Listen to this. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and you know they covered him up with a big old stone around the door. It didn't matter. They put soldiers around the grave. It doesn't matter. When it's time for you to get up, you're going to get up. Amen. Lazarus had been dead for a number of days. But when Jesus came, he said, Lazarus, wake up. The Bible said, don't you know he's stinking? But you know, let me tell you something. When that call comes, when that call comes, see, this is what I get happy about right here. When that call comes, you are going to hear it. And if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, God's going to do what? Bring with him. Oh, he's going to bring them with him. So we need to clarify that out. Keep going. For this we say unto you, by the way of the Lord, uh -huh. that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Now, see, when the Lord does what? When he comes. For this we say unto you, brethren, by the word, by the word of the Lord. See, the new, so-called New Testaments, or the Gospels, or the letters, was not written when Paul is doing his teaching, when he's writing this letter. So he said, this is by the word of God. I say to you, brethren, by the word of God, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, Shall not prevent them with them which are asleep. You're not going to prevent them which are in the grave. Keep going. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. He's going to come down from heaven. Descend means come down. He's going to come down from heaven with a what? With a shout. A and what? With the voice of an archangel. Keep going. And with the trump of God. And what's going to happen? And the dead in Christ shall rise and first. And the dead in Christ. See, the dead going to get up first. 
Keep going. Then we, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And one thing we have to go over to 1 Corinthians 15 chapter. Because what he's saying is, is that you're going, as the Lord is descending, you're going to get up. The dead and those that are alive, we're going to be able to catch up with him in the air as he's descending. And then he says, there you're going to be evermore with the Lord. You're not going to be with him evermore in the air. He's not descending from heaven, from the throne, just to be in the air. He's descending from heaven. He's going to meet the saints in the air so he can be right here on this earth. We're going to get to that. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians 15 chapter. In the lesson, we're going to get to that today. Read verses 21 through 23. 1 Corinthians 15 chapter, 21 through 23. Listen to this. For since by man came death, uh -huh. by man came also the resurrection because of the dead. Because Adam calls us to die. Because he's sinned, now we got to go back to the grave. But if God wants to get you, he has to send somebody else to redeem you from that grave. So since by man came death, guess what? By man came also the resurrection of the dead. Keep going. For as in Adam all die. But? Even so in Christ all shall be made alive. And listen to this. But See, there's, there's an order to this, Elder Mac. Nobody has gone to heaven. The Bible says no man has gone to heaven. No man, nobody. Amen? Amen? There's an order to this. Because God ain't trying to come to heaven. God ain't trying to be in heaven. He, his, his, it's his desire to dwell right here on the earth. His kingdom will be set up on the earth. I'm going to show that to you in the scriptures in this lesson. But every man in his own order. Everybody's got to be in his own order. Christ the first fruits? Christ is the first fruits. That's why we have the feast of the first fruits. He's the first fruits afterward. Afterward, they that are Christ when? At, his come, at his coming. You don't change until Christ comes at his coming. Isn't that what the scriptures say? Amen. You're not going to die and then become spirit and be up in heaven. It don't happen now. The Bible don't say it happens. It doesn't happen until at his coming. Amen. Let's find out what happens when he comes. Because we talked about the children of Israel having a, a sword in one hand, singing in another hand. Go over to Zechariah, the 14th chapter. Read verses 1 through 5. Listen to this. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of uh -huh. thee. This is how it's going to end. Some people say, how does all this happen? When does it happen? This is when it happens. When the day of the Lord cometh, the spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee. What's he going to do in verse 2? For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. See, no, watch, watch. That's why you need to watch the news. See, when that abomination gets over there in the desolation, it's going to upset the entire Middle East. And there's going to be all of these people coming up against Jerusalem. Keep going. And the city shall be taken. And the city's going to be taken. And the house is rifled. Uh-huh. And the women ravaged. Uh-huh. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall be cut off from the city. Now, when the Lord returns, remember we said that the people are going to be singing in one hand, and they're going to have a sword in another hand, and they're going to be taking vengeance on the heathen. They're going to be taking captivity, the kings of the earth. Read the next verse. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day, as when he fought in the day of battle. Now that's what's going to happen. When he comes back, he's not come. He's coming back to resurrect the saints from the dead and those that are alive. He's going to change you. You're going to meet him in the air. You're going to be singing out of the, out the songs out of one mouth and you're going to have a sword in the next. Amen. Keep reading. Keep reading. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, uh -huh. which, which is before Jerusalem on the east. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Listen to this part. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled before, from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And who's going to be with him? And the Lord my God shall come. And all the saints. And him. all 
the saints going to be with it. You remember what we read over in Psalms that they're going to be singing with one hand and with a sword in another? Go back to Psalms 149. Just read verses 6 through 9. So you need to know what's going to happen when this thing happens. Y'all think that you're going to be resurrecting and you're just going to be up there singing all day? You're coming back with a mission. <laughs> Amen. That's why it says the slain of the Lord is going to be many. Many. Because there's going to be some vengeance to take place. Read verses 6 through 9. Listen to this. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. High praises going to be in your mouth. And the two-edged sword in their hand. But a two-edged sword is going to do with your hand. What you going to do with the two-edged sword? To execute the vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. You didn't know that was going to happen, did you? This is why we have to teach this. Because people say, I didn't know I was going to do that. I, you mean I'm going to come back singing happy and, and my voice and the sword and another to take vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people? What else you going to do? To bind their kings with chains. You're going to bind the kings with, with chains because and God is sick of this government. He's going to take the rulers of this government and he's going to bind them up. Keep going. And their nobles with fetters of iron. With fetters of iron. Keep going. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all the saints. Praise ye the Lord. Go back to Zechariah. Uh, I had to interrupt that in there. Go ahead and start with, uh, uh, I think, what verse we end off in? Six. six. Pick it up in verse six. Zechariah, the 14th chapter. Stick it up with verse six. Because I want you to know what that day is going to be like when he comes back. And here's what the constellation is going to change. Remember Matthew? He says that, it, that uh, it's going to be neither light nor dark. And the sun is going to refuse to shine. Zechariah saying the same thing. Read this verse. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall be not clear nor dark. Uh-huh. But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night. But it shall come to pass that evening, that at evening time it shall be light. Uh-huh. And it shall be in that day. Listen that, to this part. That now, living... now Zachar, uh, 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 we, we read in here what Zachariah is saying. But I'm going to listen to this. I'm going to show you this in Revelation. And that day, it should be what? It sh it sh and in that day, living it waters? shall be in that day that living water shall go out from Jerusalem. When he sets up. Because he doesn't kill everybody when he returns. He leaves a remnant from every nation. We're going to find that out. Listen to this. Keep going. Half of them toward the former sea. And, and so there's going to be these waters coming out of Jerusalem. Half of them toward the former sea. And half of them toward the hinder sea. Uh-huh. In the summer and in winter. And it's going to happen all year long. Shall it be. Keep going. And the Lord shall be king over all earth. And he's going to be what? King over all the earth. This is why he ain't going to be the king of no clouds. He's not going to be in the earth, in the air for a thousand years. He's going to be the king over all the earth. Listen to this. In that day shall there be one Lord. There's going to be one Lord. And his name one. And his name one. Keep going. That's 19, 69. Yeah, go ahead and read, uh, what's the next verse? 10. Uh, skip down to verse number 16. Verse okay. number 16. Okay. Because, see, you need to know when you return and bind up people, because you're going to be killing a whole lot of folk saints of the most high God in that first resurrection. But you're not going to kill everybody. Listen to this. Verse 16. Listen to this. And it shall come to pass uh -huh. that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem. Oh, you mean there's going to be all of these people, all of these nations that came up against Jerusalem. Keep going. Shall even go up year from, from year to year to worship the king the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. See, you see how important Tabernacles is? So when he comes back, mother, there's all of these nations. Everybody's going to go up against Jerusalem. But he's going to leave some folk. Now let me ask you this. Here you are on earth and you're in the flesh. You ain't in the first resurrection. You're just in flesh and you, a lot, lot of people are going to be killed. But think about it. What do you think those people are going to be doing that are left and they saw all of this? Do you think you're going to have to convince them? <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. They're going to have a come to Jesus meeting real quick. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They're going to be scared. Oh, my God, did you just see what happened? Where did those folks come from? This got to be the Messiah. 
Keep going. It should come to pass that everyone that's left in all those nations which came up against Jerusalem, what are they going to do? Shall go up from year to year to worship the you king. You're going to go up from year to year to worship the king. The Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. And to keep the Feast of and Tabernacles. you will keep the Tabernacles. You may not want to keep the Tabernacles right now. You may argue when I try to teach you the Tabernacles right now. Amen. And I hope you all are here. Feast of Tabernacles, every feast day of God is good. But let me try and tell you something. The world may reject it. You may try to take it to your family. And you may try to show them the feast days. And they may be, look at you like they're crazy. But if they are still on earth when the Messiah comes and they're not taken out, they will come up from year to year to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Keep going. And it shall be that whoso shall not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to, to worship the king, to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. You know that water that was coming out of Jerusalem, that they said it was going to come out of Jerusalem going down on each side? There's something special about that water. And if you don't come up, you're not going to get no rain. And that water that comes out that's special, you're going to find you're not going to be blessed. Let's find out about that water. Ezekiel, the 40th chapter. See, Ezekiel had a vision. See, when I tell you this thing is all throughout the Old Testament, and you, are, you can put it all together, let's find out what Ezekiel had to say about this. I'm, I'm looking at the time, too. Ezekiel, the 40th chapter. We're going to skip around real quick. First of all, I want to let you know why Ezekiel saw something, when he saw something, and what did he see. Listen to this. In the 5 and 20th year of our captivity. We're in Ezekiel, the 40th chapter, verses 1 through 4. If you want to write that down, keep going. In the 5 and what? 20th year of our captivity. Uh-huh. In the beginning of the year, in the 10th day of the month, in the 14th year after this, after that the city was smitten. Uh huh. In the self same day, the hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me thither. The hand of the Lord was upon him. He's in captivity, but God wants to show him something. What did the Lord show him? Listen to this, verse in, two. In the visions of God brought me, in the in the visions of God brought he me into the land of Israel and set me upon a very high mountain. By which, was the name, by which was the frame of a city on the south. You in captivity. You're not in Israel, but you're in captivity. But God showed him in a vision, said, let me show you Israel. Keep going. And he brought me thither. And, uh -huh. and behold, there was a man uh -huh. whose appearance was like the appearance of brass with a line of flax in his hand and a measuring reed. And he stood in the gate. And what did the Lord tell him? What did the man say? And the man said unto me, uh -huh. Son of man, behold with thine eyes. I want you to listen. I want you to view with your eyes what I'm getting ready to show you. And hear with thine ears. And I want you to hear what I'm getting ready to tell you. And set thine heart upon all that I show thee. And I want you to set your mind on everything I'm getting ready to show you something. Because you in captivity. But I'm getting ready to show you something, son. Listen to this. Keep going. For to the intent that I might show them unto thee art thou brought hither. And there's a reason why I'm bringing you here. I have very good intentions of showing you what I want to show you. And what is that? Declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. I want you to show everything I'm getting ready to show you to the house of Israel. Skip over to the 43rd chapter of Ezekiel. I, I love the book of Ezekiel because he's going to show you what God wanted. And it ain't no different than what John saw. Listen to this. The 43rd chapter of uh, Ezekiel. Read verses. Start with verses 1 through 10. Listen to this. Let's read quickly. Afterward, he brought me to the gate. Uh-huh. Even, even the gate that looketh toward the east. And behold, the glory of the Lord of Israel came from the way of the east. And his voice was like the voice of many waters. And the earth shined in his, with his glory. And it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, uh -huh. even, even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. Uh -huh. And the visions were like the visions that I saw by the river Shabar. But who was in here? Listen to this. And the glory of the Lord came into the house by way of the gate whose prospect is toward the east. Uh -huh. so, the spirit, so the spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court. And behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. And I heard him speaking unto me out of the house. What did he say? And a man stood by me, and he said unto me, Son of man, the place of my throne and the place 
of the soles of my feet, wherein I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. And now, my, he's going to dwell where? In the He's going to the dwell there. Forever. See, this is right here that's going to be on earth. I'm going to dwell amongst the children of Israel. Keep going. Thus saith the Lord God. Uh-huh. The gate of the inner court that looketh toward the east shall be shut the six working days. That gate's going to be shut but on six working days. But on the oh, Sabbath, it shall be open. It's going to be shut when? Six working days. In the kingdom, that's going to be working days, Brother Kurt. See, this is what he's showing Ezekiel. Come here, I'm going to show you what's going to happen in Israel. There will be working days. Earth continues on. Six days, the gate is going to be what? Shut. Right. But keep going. But on the Sabbath, it shall be open. And it's going to be open. Didn't Zechariah say, whoever don't come up from one Sabbath to the next? It's going to be open. Keep going. And in the, day, in the day of the new moon, it shall be open. From one feast day to the next, it's going to be open. Keep going. Likewise, the people of the land shall worship at the, the door of the people of the who? The people of the land. Didn't Zechariah say, I'm going to leave some folk Amen. from a remnant from all of those nations? The people of the land shall do what? Shall worship at the door of this gate before the Lord in the Sabbaths and in the new moons. Keep going. Verse, skip down to verse number nine. But when the people of the land shall come before the Lord in solemn feasts. Because you're going to come there during the feast days, during the Sabbaths. He that enter in by the way of the north gate to, the, to worship shall go out by the way of the south gate. Those that come in through the north gate are going to have to go out the south gate. And Those that come in through the south gate got to go out through the north gate. Go over to Ezekiel, the 47th chapter. Afterward, he brought me again unto the door of the house. Uh -huh. And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under, from under, the, under from the right side of the house uh -huh. at the south side of the altar. And I but, want you to stop there because what I'm trying to show you is when Ezekiel had this dream, he would measure out a thousand cubits. First, the water was at his ankles. He, he, they measured out another uh, a thousand feet. It came up to his knees, came up through his thighs. Every thousand feet, the water kept getting deeper and deeper. It got so deep that he had to swim. Read verse, skip down to verse number six. Listen to this. And he said unto me, uh -huh. son of man, uh -huh. hast thou seen this? Did you see what's going on? Then he brought me, uh -huh. and, and caused me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Uh huh. Keep going. Now, when I returned, behold, the bank of the river, behold, at the bank of the river were many trees on the one side and on the other side. And he saw a whole bunch of trees then on he said, one side of the brink and on the other side of the brink. What about those trees? I'm talking about when you get into the kingdom. I'm showing you what's going to happen when Jesus comes and sets up his kingdom. Keep going. Then he said unto, unto me, uh -huh. these waters issue out toward the east country uh -huh. and go down into the desert and it go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the water shall be healed. In Revelation, didn't they talk about these waters? Didn't we just read that these waters are going to come out in Zechariah? And whoever don't come up from one Sabbath to the next, you're not going to get the water? Because these oh, waters man. do what? They heal. Keep going. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the rivers shall come, shall live. This is going to be so good of a water that nothing in the water is going to die. Keep going. And there shall be a, a very great multitude of fish. It's going to be a whole bunch of fish. Because these waters shall come thither. Because the waters are going to come there. When they come out of Jerusalem, anything that comes out of Jerusalem, it's going to be for healing. The water is going to be for healing. Keep going. For they shall be healed. And they're going to be healing waters. And everything shall live wither from the river cometh. Keep going. Let's try to find out. Skip down to verse number 12. Last verse. I'm going to talk about them trees. You remember them trees he saw on each side of the brink? Listen to this. And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for me. Because there's going to be a whole bunch of trees for me. Keep going. Who, whose leaves shall not fade. And these leaves are not going to fade. Neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. And the fruit going not going to be consumed. It's going to be so much fruit. You pick the fruit, it's going to keep coming. Keep going. 
It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months. And every according to his seasons is going to keep bringing fruit. Just keep bringing fruit. Keep going. Because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary. Because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary. And because it's being fertilized by the waters that came out of the sanctuary. And this the, is important to know, church. This is important to know. Keep going. And the fruit thereof shall be for me. And the fruit's going to be for me. If the waters are healing, and the waters cause the trees to grow to the point that the leaves will never fade, could you imagine that the water that makes the fruit grow, how much healing that's going to be? Why do you think Isaiah said that a baby will live to be 100 years old? You find out what's going to happen in this kingdom, you better get there. I'm talking about it's better to be there in the first resurrection. Keep going. And is that leaf, it? And the leaf thereof for medicine. And the leaf is going to be for what? Medicine. Medicine. Amen. Let's go over to Revelations. I'm almost finished. Revelations, the 20th chapter. Revelations, the 20th chapter, verses 7 through 15. Because, see, you need to know what's happening. You need to know what's going to go on. Revelations, the 20th chapter, verses 7 through 15. Listen to this. Because that's going to be for a thousand years, church. We pray for the baby today. The Bible says that a baby will be able to sit down with a snake. And the snake's going to not going to bother the baby. A lion can sit down with the lamb. And the lamb don't have to worry about being afraid of the lion. It's going to be a perfect kingdom, a perfect society. Why? Because it belongs to Jesus. But guess what? If you're in that first resurrection, all you're going to be doing is teaching folk. Amen? That's what you're going to be doing. Where we are? Where are we? Revelation 20. 20. Read verses 7. Listen to this. And when the thousand years are expired. And when the thousand years are expired, what's going to happen? Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Now... All of those people that were left that he did not kill over the next thousand years, you know what happens? The earth populates. And there's going to be a whole bunch of people that's going to be populated on this earth. If there's people left from every nation because they God spared them because he just didn't kill them, because he's going to kill, he's going to kill a lot of folk, but he's just going to leave some folk from every nation. You all don't have to worry because we're in that first resurrection. First resurrection. We sang him with our words in one hand and we got a sword in the other. And let me tell you something. That sword is not only for killing. That sword is also going to be for teaching because that's the word of God. Keep going. And shall go out to deceive the nations which uh -huh. are in the four corners of the earth. Satan is going to be loose for a little season. After that thousand years is up, he's going to go out and to deceive the nations. Could you imagine that he's going to be loose, and after all of that good living, having leaves that are for your healing, waters for your healing, when you lose Satan, you know he's going to be able to conjure up a group of folk. Keep going. Gog and Magog. Uh-huh. To gather them to battle. Uh-huh. The number he's of He's going to talk folk into being able to battle. You want to know how many people it is? Listen to this. The number of whom which is as the sand of the sea. You know just as many people that's going to be in that first resurrection. He says, I saw them. They was like the numbers of the sand of the sea. When Satan, after that thousand years, he's going to conjure up enough folk that's going to be the number of the sand of the sea that will have the audacity to try to come up against those that are in, uh, in that first resurrection and the most high. What's going to happen? And they went upon the breadth of the earth. Uh huh. And they compassed the camp of the saints about. Okay. And the beloved city. And fire came down from God of heaven and devoured them. And the devil. You can read this prophecy. You can read this prophecy. A thousand years after he comes, Brother Kirk, they still gonna do it. How do I know? Isaiah 66 says, when the Lord returns. And his anger is going to be with him, and he's going to use a sword to kill folk, those that eat swine's flesh and the abomination. Folks still going to eat pork. They can hear this message today, and they're going to still eat their pork. Even knowing that once you learn about it and you do it anyway, you're going to be caught up, 
and your tongue's going to burn in the root of your mouth and your eyes in the socket of your head because of eating swine's flesh and, 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 and the mice, you're still going to go out and do it. Folk can have this prophecy and they still think that they can outdo God. Just like we're, we're no different. The children of Israel, Moses went up to the mountain for a little few days, came back, and Israelites had made a calf. He gone too long. After God opened up the Red Sea, he's gone too long. We need our own God. This is the way folk are. Keep going. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire he's and brimstone. He's going to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Where the beast and the false prophet are. Because that's where they are. You know who the beast and the false prophet are? That's that man that's going to be set up in that false prophet at the beginning of the thousand years. They're going to be put right into that lake of fire. And guess what? Read Isaiah 66. I'm going to bring it up next week. You, as you're going up from one Sabbath to the next, you're going to walk and look over at that lake of fire. Y'all didn't know that, did you? In the kingdom, you're going to see it. The lake is going to be burning, and you're going to be over to look over and see what's burning. That fire is not going to be quenched. Keep going. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And Satan is going to be thrown in that same lake that you're going to see in the kingdom, and it's going to burn forever and ever. Keep going. And I saw a great, a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face was from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Uh-huh. And there was, there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. After the thousand years is up, after Satan has been put away, you're going to have the second resurrection. Keep going. Keep going. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged, and the dead were judged out of these things, out of those things which were written in the books and according to their folks works. That are gonna get up in that second resurrection, they're gonna be judged. You know who's gonna judge them? You are. How do I know you're gonna judge them? Because he says, Dare any of you to have a matter against one another, take each other to court. No, you're not that you should judge the world. You're gonna even judge angels. Those of you that are gonna of us, not you, of us that's going to be in that first resurrection, that's what we're going to do. Going, we're going to be singing in one hand and a sword in the other. Keep going. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Uh-huh. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Keep going. And they were judged every man according to their works. And everybody's going to be judged in that second resurrection. Keep going. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And let's, let me tell you, at the end of the thousand years... Death and the grave is going to be cast into the lake of fire. See, there's some people think that hell is the lake of fire. Death and hell. Hell is Sheol. Sheol is the grave. Death and the grave are going to be cast where? Into the lake of into fire. Into the lake of fire. You know why? Because it's not going to exist no more. It's not going to exist no more. Keep going. This is the second death. Because that's the second death. And whosoever was not found, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of and fire. And those in that second resurrection, if you was not found in the book of life, guess what? Bye bye. See you later. Where are you? You cast into the lake of fire. Amen. Amen. Now let's talk about those healing nations. I just got two more scriptures, and I'm going in. We're going to go eat. Revelations the 22, Revelations 22, because I want to let you know John saw the same thing that Ezekiel saw. You remember Ezekiel saw, I saw waters coming out, and they were for the healing of the nation. Read Revelations 22. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, uh -huh. clear as crystal, uh -huh. pro proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bare 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And, and what about the leaves? And the leaves of the tree were for healing of the nations. Didn't we just read that in Ezekiel? Amen. Amen. The leaves are for the healing of the nation. And those that are resurrected, if they accept Christ, if they listen, and if they take part of the tree of life, they're going to become spirit. Keep going. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb 
and of the Lamb of God shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Uh huh. And they shall see his face, and his and name. We shall, gonna see his face. And his name shall be in their foreheads. Uh, keep going. And there shall be no night there, and they they need no candle, neither light of sun. Now, uh, go down to verse number seven. Listen to this. Behold, I come quickly. Uh huh. Blessed is he that keep the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Didn't it? Didn't that what he said in the very first chapter? Amen. We start. That was our first scripture. Blessed is he that readeth. And understand the words of prophecy of this book, he ends that same way. Amen? Amen. Keep Amen. going. And I, and I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the, of the angel which had showed me these things. And guess what? Then, he then he may have told Daniel to close up the book, but listen to what he's telling John. What did he tell John? Then saith he unto me. What verse me, are you in? Verse, skip down to verse number 10. 10. Verse number 10. And he saith unto me. He said unto me. Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He if that if is that's right how you're going to be, that's how you're going to be, church. Keep going. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Why? And behold, I come quickly, and my reward's with me. See, when he comes and the saints going to come with him, his reward is with him. Keep going. To give every man according to his and work gonna, shall be. And you're going to be given according to your works. Why? I am Alpha and Who Omega. Who is? Oh, the beginning and the end. And guess what? The first and the last. Read the next verse. Blessed Verse 14. Are, blessed are they that do his commandments. See, you want to nail them to the cross. Don't nail them to the cross, church. Don't let nobody tell you these things have been nailed to the cross. Blessed and holy are they that what? Do his commandments. Why? That they might have the right to the trees of life. And to do what? And may enter into through the streets, through the gates into the city. Why? So you want to enter into those gates. Everybody's not going to be in those gates. Who can't go into those gates? For without our dogs. There ain't going to be no dogs there. And sorcerers. No sorcerers. And whoremongers. No whoremongers. And murderers. Murders. And idolaters. Idolaters. And whosoever loveth to make a lie. And whoever the lover to make a lie. Stop I, right there. And after the thousand years is over, in the, see, the sixth, the seventh month of the sixth day, the thousand years starts. It ends on the seventh month, on the seventh day. Because a thousand years later, after the tabernacle, is a thousand years later on the seventh day in the seventh month. But guess what happens? Satan is going to be loose because you got 12 months in a year. You got five months. I don't know what that five months equals out to be. I don't know. Satan's just going to be loose for a little season. Then you're going to have the great white throne judgment. And then there's going to be not a lot of time. Folk, either you're in or either you're out. Amen? Either you accept the tree of life or either you don't. Amen? So over those five months, but after the five months, this is why it says after the Feast of Tabernacles, you should celebrate the tabernacles for how long? Seven, Seven days. days. The first day is what? And then it jumps up and says what? The eighth day. And the eighth day is something special, Brother Kurt, because there's no more flesh. There's no more judging. Either you spirit or you flesh that didn't make it and you're in that lake of fire. Because everybody has to be flesh that's going to be. Everybody has to be spirit. Everybody must be spirit because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And what happens, my last verse, what happens after everything is brought under subjection? Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. I want you to read four verses, and we're going to end this lesson. Listen to this. Then cometh the end. Then cometh the end. After the end of the seventh day, when that eighth day starts, because Jesus told you. He already told you. He stood up on that last great day of the feast. And he's pleading. He that thirsts, come. There's some water over here coming up out of the throne. 
And if you're thirsty, drink it. Don't worry about it because if you take a part of it, your flesh will become what? Spirit. Amen? And after Jesus has gotten everything done, he's cast Satan into the lake. All the flesh that just want to be hard-headed into the lake. Then come at the end, when he's going to do what? When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. He's going to deliver his kingdom that he established for a thousand years to the Father. Even what? Even the Father. Even the Father. When is that going to happen? When he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. When he puts down everybody, including Satan, under every rule, every power. Father, it's done. Keep going. For he must reign. Because he's got to reign a thousand years until what happens? Till he hath put his enemies under his feet. And he's going to put his enemies under his feet. And who's that enemy? The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Remember he said he's going to cast death and hell into the lake of fire along with Satan? Keep going. For he hath put all things under his and when feet. When he has put under all things underneath his feet. Keep going. But when, he, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expected which did put all things under him. Oh, and it's going to happen. Keep going. And when he and when all things had and then when all things shall be subdued, and when him, everything is subdued, then shall the Son also Himself be subject unto Him that put all things under Him. Even the Son is going to be subject to the Father when His kingdom comes down on earth and dwell with men who have become spirit because the eighth day means that you're no longer dwelling in a tabernacle. This is why he says for seven days during the Feast of Tabernacles, you must dwell where? In the tabernacle, right? Sit up underneath of it. Because on the eighth day, Elder Scully, we need to take down the tabernacle. It ain't supposed to be up. Did you know that? You're only supposed to dwell in it for seven days. Because on the eighth day, it is when the tabernacle no longer exists and we have become spirit. A thousand years, new heaven and new earth. A translation of the saints. How it all happens. God bless you. I'm Stephen Johnson, the senior pastor at Bethel House of God, located right here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. You know, now that we know that we're Israel, we're the people of the book, what do we do from here? Well, there's a lot of things we have to learn, a lot of things we have to, do, to discuss, and a lot of things we have to be taught. We have to talk about how do we become in the first resurrection. We have to talk about that the feast days are the plan to salvation. It's a roadmap that leads into the kingdom that's going to be right here on this earth and that we need to be a part of that kingdom. I do that because, and teach that because it's important for us as Israel to know. It's bigger than knowing who we are, but what are our roles? What are, what are our roles during that millennium? What are we supposed to be teaching today? Again, it's bigger than saying who you are, what DNA you come from, what is your historical history? We, we understand that, and those are good things to know because we are awakening up every day. But the most important thing is we must learn this word. We must learn what the gospel is according to the prophets, and that is that the kingdom of heaven is going to be right here on earth. So I make a plea to you today, and I ask you if you can help us in this effort, in this ministry, by going to BethelHouseOfGod.org. That's BethelHouseOfGod.org. Look for the donate button. And we ask that you'll help us by getting better cameras, uh, better software. There's a lot of things that we need to do, a lot of equipment, lighting, because we want to put out a productive message to the people. Israel, 
both adopted, grafted, heirs, joint heirs, natural, spiritual, wherever you may be, we want to get this kingdom of the gospel of heaven out to all of the four corners of the earth. So thank you so much, and don't forget to hit that subscribe.